Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. For mobile optimized ebooks, please install GK Today Academy app. You can attempt the quiz in this app and you can read detailed explanation. For regular updates, please join our telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. We have started a new channel Civils Academy. You can subscribe to it if you find it relevant. For hard copy books, you can visit our website gktbooks.com. Now let's start. What does T stand for in the Safuti scheme which was in news recently. So the name of scheme is Safuti. It stands for scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries. So this T stands for traditional. So it is a fund for the revival of traditional industries. Recently it was in news because of MSME minister Nitin Gadkari. MSME stands for micro small and medium enterprises. So recently Nitin Gadkari inaugurated this scheme based clusters. Now recently, Nitin Gadkari was also in use as he inaugurated India's first multimodal logistic park and this is in Jogi Ghopa in Assam. Presently, Nitin Gadkari is the Minister of Road Transport and Highways. Recently, his ministry launched a new campaign. It is Go Green. So this campaign was launched to encourage people to switch to electric vehicles. As per the recent study by NASA and German Aerospace Center, some microbes are found on Earth and they may survive in which planet. So as per this study, it was found that there are some microbes which are present on Earth and they may survive on Mars. Now this is very significant for the success of future Mars missions. Why? Because now these microbes can be sent to the Mars by launching them in a specific scientific balloon. Now NASA is the space agency of USA. Recently NASA was in news because of its Perseverance mission. It is NASA's mission for Mars. India's first undersea tunnel is being constructed in which city? So it is going to be in Mumbai. Mumbai is in Maharashtra and this is going to be India's first undersea tunnel and this will be under Arabian Sea. Recently Maharashtra was in news as Lonar Lake was included in the list of Ramsar sites. Ramsar is a convention for wetland preservation and conservation. Every year on 2nd of February World Wetland Day is celebrated. Ramsar is a name of place and it is in Iran. Now the most recent entry from Indian side is Sokar Lake. That means this lake is the latest Ramsar site in our country. This lake is in Union Territory of Ladakh. Which is the world's first country to ban all vulture toxic drugs known so far. So it is our neighbor Bangladesh. Recently it decided to ban Ketoprofen. It is a painkiller which is used to treat the kettles. However, the problem is that when vultures feed on these kettles, it creates problems for these vultures and sometimes it leads to the death of these vultures. So that is why Bangladesh decided to ban this ketoprofen. There is another veterinary drug and it is diclofenic. Even this is banned. Now India banned this diclofenic in 2006. Which country was the top trade partner? of India in 2020. So as per recent data from Commerce Ministry, China was a top trading partner in last year. China replaced USA as a top trading partner. So the bilateral trade was 77.7 billion dollars. That means bilateral trade between India and China. In case of India and USA, it was 75.9 billion dollars. And UAE was a third biggest trade partner of India. So China is on first position. USA is on second position and UAE is on third position in terms of trade with India. Wainad Wildlife Sanctuary is situated in which state of India? So this is situated in the state of Kerala. Recently Kerala was in news as it became the first state in our country to announce MSP for vegetables. Kerala was also in news because recently Arya Rajendran became the youngest mayor and she is mayor from Tiruvananthapuram in Kerala. Recently Kerala was also in news because of India's first digital university and this is going to be in Mangalapuram in Kerala. Which airport has topped the customer satisfaction survey by AAI that is Airport Authority of India. So as per this survey by AAI Udaipur is on top position and Madurai in Tamil Nadu is on second position. Udaipur is in Rajasthan. Udaipur is known as the city of lakes. So this AAI is Airport Authority of India. It is a statutory body and 
It is under Ministry of Civil Aviation. Recently, Rajasthan was in news because it announced M Sand policy. M Sand stands for Manufactured Sand Policy. In which state, the Advanced Institute of Integrated Research in Livestock and Animal Sciences has been inaugurated recently. So this state is Tamil Nadu. The Chief Minister is K. Palniswami. Recently, he was in news because he inaugurated this AII RLAS. What is AII RLAS? It is Advanced Institute of Integrated Research in Livestock and Animal Science. So recently, this was inaugurated and it is in Salem district of Tamil Nadu. This is significant because it is going to be the largest such institution in the Asia. Hunter killers are to be procured by which Indian armed forces? So they will be procured by Indian Army. Recently, it was in news because DAC, that is Defense Acquisition Council, approved the proposal of Indian Army to buy Arjun Mark 1A Hunter Killers. So these will be procured by Indian Army. Now this DAC is Defense Acquisition Council and it is headed by Defense Minister. And this is the top authority for the defense procurement. Now please note that these Arjun MK main battle tanks are manufactured by DRDO. DRDO is under MOT, that is Ministry of Defense. A historic painting created over 17,000 years ago by Aboriginal artist has been identified in which country? So this was identified in Australia. It is a kangaroo painting. As you can see in this picture, this is the kangaroo painting. And this is claimed to be the oldest intact rock art in Australia. Recently, this was found in the Kimberley region of Australia. Now, this Kimberley is also known for Kimberley process. What is Kimberley process? It is related to commitment to remove conflict diamonds. What is the meaning of this term? Conflict diamonds. That means these are the rough diamonds which are used by the rebel groups or by the terrorist organization to finance the conflict. So the objective of this Kimberley process is to remove such diamonds from the global supply chain. What is the outlay of the PLI that is production linked incentive scheme for pharmaceuticals and for IT hardware sector? So first thing first, what is the meaning of this term? Production linked incentive. That means if you are going to produce more, government will provide you more incentive. So for certain sectors, government had announced these incentives. Again, you need not to remember these figures. Just understand the concept that this PLI scheme is approved to give a boost to our manufacturing capacities so that we can export more and we can attract more investment. So for certain sectors, this scheme has been announced. As of now, these are 10 sectors. Augmented reality head mounted display systems which were in use recently are to be acquired by which Indian armed forces. So first thing first, what is this AR HMD? That is augmented reality head mounted display. So this display is like this. The soldier, it is some foreign soldier. Soldier is wearing this display. And with the help of this display, soldier will be able to see the targets even in night because the system is using radar and thermal imaging. Where is the headquarters of ICOLD? That is International Commission on Large Dams. So the headquarters is in Paris. Paris is in France. What is this ICOLD? It is International Commission on Large Dams and it is a non-governmental organization which share the knowledge of design, construction and impact of large dams. Why this was in news? Because recently an event was organized and this event was a symposium on sustainable development of dams and river basins. This was event of ICOLD and in this event our Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Sekhawat participated. In fact, he inaugurated it and this event was organized in collaboration with CWC that is Central Water Commission, DRIP that is Dam Rehabilitation and Improvement Project and NHP that is National Hydrology Project. Now the CWC is under Jal Shakti Ministry. DRIP as the name suggests, it is a project for rehabilitation of dams and for their improvement and for this project, World Bank is providing us financial support. Which city is the venue of Maritime India Summit 2021? So this is going to be a virtual summit. Virtual means this summit will be organized online. And this is the key initiative of Ministry of Ports, Sipping and Waterways. Prime Minister is going to inaugurate this summit on 2nd of March. 
and the theme is exploring the potential business opportunities. Now recently this Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways was in use as it was renamed. Previously its name was Ministry of Shipping. Now the new name is Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. In the context of water, please note that water is a state subject but shipping is a union subject. Which country has assumed chairship of BRICS for the 2021? So India is the chair of BRICS for this year. What is BRICS? It is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So this is association of five countries. For this year, India is the chair. Recently it was in use because of Sherpa meeting. So what is the meaning of this term Sherpa meeting? Usually before any big event, the agendas and priorities of that particular event are fixed. So this Sherpa meeting was organized to fix the agenda of BRICS meeting. Now BRICS countries set up a bank and it is new development bank. Previously it used to be known as BRICS development bank. So it is a bank by these five countries. The headquarters of this BRICS development bank is in Shanghai. It is in China and the regional office is in Johannesburg. Johannesburg is in South Africa. Which state has recently announced universal health coverage during its budget with an outlay of 3500 crores. So what is the meaning of this term universal health coverage? It means everyone in the state will be provided health services. Universal means this scheme is for everyone. So recently this was announced by Rajasthan government. Under the scheme every family will get insurance benefit of 5 lakh rupees. Now there is one more scheme by the government and it is Ayushman Bharat Mahatma Gandhi Rajasthan Swasthya Bhima Yojana. So it is a health insurance scheme. Which regulator in India has formed a committee to relook its information and security guidelines. So in the times of pandemic cyber attacks increased exponentially in the financial sector and therefore IRDAI that is Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India constituted an internal working group to review its information and security guidelines. So IRDAI is the regulator for insurance sector. These are the few regulators which are very important from exam perspective. For telecom sector regulator is TRI that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. For financial sector RBI is the regulator. For food safety FSSAI is the regulator. FSSAI is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. For securities market SEBI is the regulator. For insurance sector IRDAI is the regulator and for pension sector PFRDA is the regulator. From which date the second phase of COVID vaccination is set to commence in India. So the date is 1st of March 2021. It is going to be the second round of vaccination for COVID-19 vaccine. The target is to provide vaccine to the people who are above 60 and those who are above 45 years with comorbidities. In government hospitals, these vaccines will be provided free of cost. On the other hand, private hospitals will be charging for these vaccines. That means in private hospital, you will have to pay money for this vaccine. As per the new information technology rules, digital platforms will have to provide required information within how many hours. So recently, Government of India and to be specific, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology released new rules for digital platforms regulation. And the official name of these regulation is Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code. These are released by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. As per this, platforms such as WhatsApp will have to provide information on the identity verification to the authorized agencies within 72 hours. Ministry of Jal Sakti has selected how many sites under phase 4 of Swachh Iconic Places initiative. So for the fourth phase of this Swachh Iconic Places initiative, the Ministry of Jal Sakti has selected 12 such sites. Now what is this SIP initiative that is Swachh Iconic Place initiative. So it is a part of Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen component. The objective is to improve the sanitation and cleanliness standard around the sites and Jal Shakti Ministry is the nodal authority for this component. Now 12 sites are selected for this project that means for the fourth phase of this project. What is the name of messaging platform to be used by the Indian Army shortly? So the name of this platform is SAI that is secure application for internet name is SAI SAI. So recently 
it was announced by the Indian Army that Army is going to use this messaging platform for internal communications. Present Indian Army Chief is General M. M. Narwane, that is General Manoj Mukund Narwane. So this application has been developed by Colonel Sai Sankar. Right now, it is waiting for the approval and once it is approved, then it will be used by Indian Army. Which organization regulates a Nidhi company in its operational matters and deployment of funds? Now, first thing first, what is a Nidhi company? Nidhi company is considered as a mutual benefit financial company and it is recognized under section 406 of Companies Act. Present Companies Act is of 2013. Now, please note that this Companies Act is regulated by MCA, that is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So, if these Nidhi companies are recognized under Companies Act, therefore, Ministry of Corporate Affairs is regulator for these entities and therefore it is responsible for the operational matters and deployment of funds in these Nidhi companies. The core business of Nidhi company is borrowing and lending money between their members. These companies are also known as mutual benefit company or benefit funds. Who is the chairperson of task force on interlinking rivers which has agreed Mahanadi Godavari link? So this task force is headed by Siriram Vadire. He is the advisor to the Ministry of Jalsha. Recently, this task force approved the interlinkage of these two rivers. What is the meaning of this term interlinkage? See, two rivers will be interlinked. That means they will be connected and the surplus water from one river will be transferred to the deficit river. In which place ASI, that is Archaeological Survey of India, has discovered the first epigraphical reference to the death of Krishnadev Rai Nayaka. So this place is Tumkur. It is a place in Karnataka. Now please note that from historical point of view, this Vijayanagar Empire is very very important from exam perspective. Therefore, this event is significant. ASI, that is Archaeological Survey of India, has discovered the first epigraphical reference to the death of Krishnadev Rai Nayaka in Tumkur district of Karnataka. Krishnadev Rai Nayaka was the emperor of Vijayanagar Empire and ruled the kingdom from 1509 to 1529 AD. Which international organization has released WESO, that is World Employment and Social Out. So this report is released by ILO. What is ILO? It is International Labour Organization. It is a organization of United Nations and it was founded in 1919 under the League of Nations. Please note that it is a first and the oldest specialized agency of United Nations. The headquarters is in Geneva in Switzerland. Which regulator has proposed to introduce a concept called accredited investors? So this is by SEBI. What is SEBI? It is Securities and Exchange Board of India. What is the meaning of this term accredited investor? It means those who have understanding of financial products, risk and returns associated with them. That means if you are well aware about the financial products and the risk associated with these products then such investors are considered as accredited investors or qualified investors or professional investors. So such investors can take informed decisions regarding investment. Which organization has released the report on currency and finance? So this has been released by our Central Bank Reserve Bank of India. And the theme of this year's report was reviewing the monetary policy framework. So this report analyzed the trends in inflation and inflation target. What is inflation? Inflation means price rise or increment in the price. So to monitor the inflation in our country, we have MPC that is Monetary Policy Committee and it is a six member committee out of which three are from RBI and three members are appointed by Government of India. This committee is headed by RBI Governor and the decisions are taken by votes that means by majority. And in case of a tie, RBI governor have a casting vote. Which organization is set to launch COVID-19 Oxygen Emergency Task Force? So this will be launched by WHO. WHO is World Health Organization. So as the name suggests, it is for oxygen emergency. Recently, USA decided to rejoin WHO. WHO was also in news because of COVAX. So this is an alliance to provide vaccines to the poor and least developed countries and three key partners of COVAX are WHO that is World Health Organization, Gavi, Vaccine Alliance and CEP. 
CEPI. CEPI stands for Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Recently, this COVAX was in news as Ghana became the first country to receive the free COVID vaccines as part of this COVAX initiative. What is the user threshold mandated for defining a significant social media intermediary? Now, before this, let me give you a brief background. So, recently, Government of India approved certain rules for social media platforms. And these rules are Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code. So, these are issued by MEITY, that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Now, this term significant social media intermediary is specified in these latest rules. So, which social media platform will be considered as a significant social media intermediary where more than 50 lakh users are registered in India. Now, suppose just consider a scenario that you created a new social media platform and name of your platform is say app or app one, whatever you call it. Now, if there are only 100 registered users for this platform, then it is not a significant social media intermediary. But if the registered users are 50 lakh or more, then it will be considered as a social media intermediary and it will be under the ambit of these latest rules, which are issued by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So the correct answer is 50 lakh. India has agreed to set up a hotline with which of its neighboring country. Now, first thing first, what is the meaning of this term hotline? Now, like you can call your parents whenever you want to. Suppose you want to call them at 4 a.m. in the morning. So you can just dial their number and have a conversation with them. Similarly, to have a communication between India and China, this hotline has been set up to prevent any miscommunication between these two countries. So recently, both countries agreed to set up this hotline so that we can resolve our disputes through communication. See, most of the disputes are because of lack of communication or because of misunderstanding. So the objective is to provide a direct communication line between these two countries. Recently, Mr. S. J. Shankar, our external affairs minister, was also in news because of Quad. Quad is Quadrilateral Security Dialogue. So four countries are part of Quad. These four countries are Australia, India, USA and Japan. So recently, the third meeting of Quad held and this was organized virtually. Virtually means it was organized online. And in this third meeting, our external affairs minister, Mr. Jayashankar participated. As per the International Institute for Strategic Studies, that is IISS, which country is the world's largest defense spender in 2020? That means which country spent maximum amount on defense in the world? So this country is USA. Report is released by International Institute for Strategic Studies. It is a think tank and the headquarters of this think tank is in London. So as per this report, US spent 1.8 trillion in 2020 and this money was spent for defense purpose. Overall, the global military spending increased 3.9 percent. So USA is the biggest military spender or defense spender. China is on second position in terms of defense expenditure. The traditional Lantern Festival is celebrated in which country? So this is celebrated in China and it is celebrated on the 15th day of first Chinese lunar month and this year is being celebrated as year of oaks in China. So you just need to remember two terms. First is this Lantern Festival. It is related to China. Second is that this time China is celebrating 2021 as year of oaks. No need to go in too much details that it is beginning of new year or ending of new year, something like that. The Technology and Innovation Report 2021 has been released by which organization? So it has been released by UNCTAD. What is UNCTAD? It is United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So recently it released a report and the title is Technology and Innovation Report. Now, headquarters of UNCTAD is in Geneva and UNCTAD release certain reports which are very, very important from exam perspective. So first is this Technology and Innovation Report. Apart from that, UNCTAD also release World Investment Report. UNCTAD also release Information and Economy Report. It also release Trade and Development Report. So these are few important reports which are released by UNCTAD and which are frequently asked in different examinations. Which state approved a law to give life imprisonment to the food adulterators. So this state is Madhya Pradesh. Now first thing first, what is meaning of this term 
food adulteration. In simplest term, when a substance is added to a food intentionally or unintentionally, which degrade, this keyword is important, which degrade, that means which reduce the quality of that particular food. Such thing is considered as food adulteration. For example, you are adding water to the milk so that you can sell it more. So any substance which degrade the quality of that particular food item, such substance will be considered as a part of food adulteration. Recently, Madhya Pradesh approved a law to provide stringent punishment for such food adulteration. Which ministry has finalized the list of products for one district, one focus product. So this is Ministry of Agriculture. Now, before that, let me explain you the concept of one district, one focus product. That means government is going to focus on one product of each district. That means the product which is very special for that district. For example, your district is known for say coconut, then government is going to provide proper facilities to that district so that the production and export of that product can be improved. So this is the key objective of this initiative. One district, one focus product and nodal authority is Ministry of Agriculture and Family Welfare. Why it was in news recently? Because this ministry in consultation with Ministry of Food Processing named certain products for different districts. ISSF World Cup was scheduled to be held in Changwon city located in which country? So this city is in South Korea. It was scheduled in April, but now it has been postponed because of COVID restrictions. Recently, this was also in news because Indian team decided to withdraw from this tournament. Why so? Because in South Korea, there is mandatory two week quarantine. And as per our argument, this will create a problem for the training of shooters. That's why we decided to withdraw from this tournament. Now, what is ISSF? It is International Shooting Sport Federation. So, it was founded in 1907. Headquarters is in Munich in Germany. Which bird has been sported in Indonesia after 170 years? So the name of this bird is Black Broad Babbler. This is the bird. Now, this bird was sported in Borneo Island of Indonesia. Now, this is where you need to focus on. That means instead of focusing too much on this name of bird, you should focus on the area where it was found. So it was found in Borneo Island of Indonesia. This is the geographical location. This is Malaysia, Singapore, Sumatra Island, Java Island. This is Brunei and this is Indonesia. So two important things. Name of bird is Black Broad Babbler. Name of place is Borneo Island. And the unique thing about this Borneo Island is that it is politically divided among three countries, which are these three countries. One is Brunei, one is Indonesia and third country is Malaysia. So it is the only island in world which is politically administered by three countries at a time. So the first question is PC Modi, that is Pramod Chandra Modi is the chairperson of which organization? So he is the chairperson of CBDT, that is Central Board of Direct Taxes. Why he was in news? Because recently ACC, that is Appointment Committee of Cabinet, extended the reappointment of PC Modi. So he is an IRS officer. IRS stands for Indian Revenue Service. Last year, his tenure was extended. Now it has been re-extended. Now CBDT is responsible for direct taxes. Recently, CBDT was also in use because of APA, that is Advanced Pricing Agreement. So please read about it. This is your homework. Next question is India has donated a digital cobalt therapy machine developed by BARC to which country? So this country is Madagascar and it is a digital cobalt therapy machine and it is a machine for cancer treatment. It has been developed by BARC and it is Bhabatron II. Recently this machine was inaugurated in Anton Rivo and it is the capital of Madagascar. Next question is Sugamya Bharat app is being launched as a part of which ministry? So recently Union Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment, Thawarchand Gehlot, inaugurated this app. Name of app is Sugamya Bharat app. It is developed by Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities. So this department is under this ministry. Apart from this app, the minister also launched a handbook and name of this handbook was Assess the Photo Digest. So, so the name of app is Sugamya Bharat app and as you can see, this is developed by 
Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities and it is for Accessible India campaign. This Accessible India campaign is related to make our facilities more accessible for persons with disabilities or divyangzans. Next question is which mapping company has integrated into the government's COVID portal? So for the vaccination process, government has developed this COVID portal and now Map My India, a digital mapping company of India has integrated its map into this COVID portal. Next question is which country has launched the satellite Arctica M? So this has been launched by Russia. Name of satellite is Arctica M and it has been developed and launched to monitor the climate in Arctic region. Now for Arctic region, there is Arctic Council and the members of this Arctic Council are Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, USA, Canada and Denmark. So total 8 countries are the members of this Arctic Council. Please note that India is not a member of this council. Next question is which digital financial platform has achieved 1.2 billion monthly transactions record recently. So this entity is Paytm. Recently it achieved a milestone of 1.2 billion monthly transactions and with this Paytm became the largest digital platform in the financial sector which promote all payment methods like wallet, UPI, cards and net banking. So the correct answer is Paytm. Next question is fall army worm infestation on crops has been reported recently in which place? So it was recently reported in Vainad. Vainad is in Kerala and it has caused excessive damage to the crops. That's why the agriculture department of Kerala has issued advisory to the farmers. Next question is which organization has released the NDC synthesis report? NDC stands for Nationally Determined Contribution. So this has been released by UNFCCC that is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Next question is which organization is implementing the next question is which organization is the implementing agency for Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Osadhi Pariyojana. So this organization is BPPI. What is BPPI? It is Bureau of Pharma PSU of India and this BPPI is under Department of Pharmaceuticals. What is the objective of this Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Osadhi Pariyojana? Objective is to provide quality medicine at affordable cost. The fossils of Titanosaur have recently been unearthed in which country? So this country is Argentina. Now first thing first, what is the meaning of this term Titanosaur? So these are the oldest known member of dinosaur group and these are known as Titanosaur. Scientists have recently discovered the fossils of a dinosaur species named Ninja Titan Japti and these species were discovered in Argentina. Which company has developed the world's first pilotless fighter-like jet prototype? So this has been done by Boeing. Boeing is an American aerospace company and it has developed a pilotless that means without pilot fighter-like jet prototype and this has been developed in Australia. Name of this model is Loyal Wingman. So this is the first military aircraft to be designed and manufactured in Australia in more than 50 years. So this term Loyal Wingman is significant from exam perspective. The national origin based anti-discrimination for non-immigrants act has been introduced in which country? So this No Ban Act is related to USA. Please remember this term No Ban. This is an act related to USA. Recently, it was reintroduced in the House of Representatives of USA. Objective is to prevent future Muslim ban and to prohibit religion-based discrimination. Actually, the previous US president had imposed certain bans on immigration. Previous president was Donald Trump. Current president is Joe Biden. The Land Ports Authority of India is under which union ministry? So, it is under MHA. That is Ministry of Home Affairs. A. It is a statutory body and it was founded in 2012. It is under Ministry of Home Affairs and it is responsible for creating, upgrading, maintaining and managing border infrastructure in our country. Why it was in use? Because 1st of March was celebrated as the foundation day of this Land Ports Authority of India. Now, in this context, BRO is also significant. What is BRO? It is Borders Road Organization. So it is also responsible for the development of infrastructure on our borders. Answer in comment books, it is under which union ministry? 
Nescom has partnered with which technology company to launch AI Game Changers program? AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. So for this, Nascom has collaborated with Microsoft. So Microsoft has been designated as the innovation partner for this program. What is Nascom? It is National Association of Software and Services Company. What is AI? It is Artificial Intelligence. Now, in the context of AI, two events are very significant from exam perspective. One is RAISE Summit. So the summit held in 2020. What is the full form of this RAISE? It stands for Responsible Artificial Intelligence for Social Empowerment. This was organized by, that means the summit was organized by MEITY, that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology in association with Niti Ayo. Armex 21, a major skiing expedition launched by Indian Army covers which two region? So first thing first, this is skiing. Now, this Armex 21 is a skiing expedition. It has been launched by Indian Army and it has been launched from Karakoram Pass in Ladakh to Lipulekh Pass in Uttarakhand. So this will cover approximately 15.00 kilometers. Aziao is a hard gel made from the skin of which animal? So it is made from the skin of donkey. Now what is Aziao? It is a gelatin and it is used in Chinese market for manufacturing of traditional medicines. And because of increased demand of this Aziao, it is believed that there is a sharp decline in population of donkeys in our country. That means since this Aziao is in demand and it is derived from the skin of donkey, that is why donkeys are smuggled and this is leading to the decline in population of donkeys in our country. Sagar Manthan, the MMDAC has been launched in which summit? So it is Mercantile Marine Domain Awareness Center and this has been launched as a part of this Maritime India Summit and this was inaugurated by Prime Minister Mr. Modi. So, what is this MMDAC? It is a real-time vessel tracking system and this will be operated by DG of Shipping. DG stands for Director General. So, this DG of Shipping is under Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Please correct it. It is not Ministry of Sports. It is Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways. As per the 10th edition of Hurun Global Rich List 2021, which country has the highest number of billionaires? So, this country is China. Recently, this Hurun Global Rich List was published. So, as per this, Elon Musk is the world's richest individual and from Indian side, Mr. Mukesh Ambani is the richest. Overall, China is on top position in terms of highest number of billionaires. USA is on second position and India is on third position. This index also highlighted that the world added 8 billionaires a week in 2020. Sindhu Netra satellite has been recently launched using which PSLV? What is PSLV? It is Polar Satellite Launch Week. See, there are two important components. One is satellite and second is rocket or launch vehicle. So, the name of this launch vehicle is PSLV C-51. One rocket or one launch vehicle can carry multiple satellites. So, this PSLV C-51 was in use because it launched Amazonia satellite. This Amazonia one is a satellite of Brazil. What is the full form of NADMP? So, NADMP stands for National Agriculture Disaster Management Plan and this plan seeks to guide the Agriculture Ministry to ensure the timely response to the natural disasters. In simplest term, this is a national plan and if there is natural disaster like drought, flood or something like COVID-19, then this plan specify what should be done by the government and to be specific, what should be the response of Union Agriculture Ministry. So this is related to agriculture sector. Now for disaster management, we have Disaster Management Act of 2005. And as per this act, we have NDRF that is National Disaster Response Force. Next question is, which state recently unveiled Engineering Research and Development Policy 2021? So this has been done by Karnataka to strengthen the research and development in the field of engineering. Recently, Karnataka was also in news as it is going to be the host of Khelo India University Games. So this is going to be the second edition. The first edition of Khelo India University Games held in Bhuneshwar and it is in Odisha. Next question is Prashad scheme which was in news recently was launched under which union ministry? So the nodal authority for this scheme is Ministry of Tourism. What is the full form of Prashad? It stands for 
pilgrimage resignation and spirituality augmentation drive so the term is self explanatory the objective is infrastructure development and to provide additional facilities at these tourist places now for the promotion of tourism in our country there are several initiatives so one such initiative is this prashad another initiative is swadesh darshan scheme so under this scheme tourist circuits are identified for example buddhist circuit so suppose you want to know more about buddhism or you want to visit the places which are important for buddhist then this is a circuit where you can visit so this will cover the most important buddhist sites next question is which northeast state recently announced electric vehicle policy 2021 so this was announced by meghalaya and this policy is going to be effective from 1st of april target is that by 2025 there should be at least 15% electric vehicle in the state of meghalaya now recently delhi also launched such policy and the name is switch delhi in fact delhi government had announced that within next 6 months all the government departments will use electric vehicles next question is a 9 year old girl from which state has become the youngest asian girl to climb mount kilimanjaro so first thing first she is from andhra pradesh and she is kadapala ritvika sri she is 9 years old and she became the youngest asian girl to climb this mountain kilimanjaro where is this mountain kilimanjaro it is in tanzania and it is the highest peak in africa next question is iranai tivu is an island situated in which country so this is an island associated to sri lanka and it is located in the gulf of mannar why this was in news because recently this island was selected as a burial site for covid-19 victims belonging to islamic and christian communities see because of coronavirus a lot of people died in sri lanka now due to the fear of spread of coronavirus the government had imposed a ban on burial of these dead bodies in fact government previously forced these minority groups to cremate their dead and after international intervention now government has selected this island and the people belonging to these communities can bury the dead on this place next question is which strategy has recently been launched with the objective of revamping the indian maritime sector so this is a 10 year strategy and it is maritime india vision 2030 recently this maritime india summit was organized and during that summit this new strategy has been launched objective is to attract 3 lakh crore investment in this sector and to generate 20 lakh employment opportunities now this maritime india summit was organized by ministry of ports shipping and waterways next question is the national council of science museums has set up science center in udaipur question is this is located in which state of india so there is one udaipur in rajasthan and this science center is going to be in another udaipur and it is in state of tripura and this has been jointly funded by ministry of culture and the tripura government recently tripura was also in news because of jagrut tripura so it is an initiative by the state government to boost the e governance in the state of tripura next question is new jalpaiguri is located in which state so it is in state of west bengal why it was in news recently because this year bangladesh is celebrating 50 years of liberation previously bangladesh was part of pakistan and as a result of 1971 war bangladesh became a separate country and this year that means in 2021 Bangladesh is celebrating 50 years. That's why a new passenger train service was started between Dhaka, that is the capital of Bangladesh, and New Jalpaiguri. This New Jalpaiguri is in West Bengal. So this train will run through Chilahati Haldibadi cross border rail route. One important point is that this New Jalpaiguri station is the largest railway station in the Northeast Frontier Railway zone. Next question is the government has amended which rules to bring insurance brokers within its ambit so recently these rules of 2017 were amended so insurance ombudsman rules 2017 were amended now insurance brokers are covered under these rules so with the help of this new guideline if you have any complaint regarding insurance broker then you can approach insurance ombudsman previously this was not the case because they were not covered under this rule in simplest term 
who is ombudsman ombudsman is someone who has been appointed for your grievance redressal so if you have any complaint regarding insurance or regarding insurance broker you can approach ombudsman of that specific sector next question is india is set to join hands with which country to conduct maritime special planning in lakshadweep and puducherry so this country is norway and from our side the ministry of earth sciences is going to collaborate with the government of norway objective is to conduct marine special planning in lakshadweep and puducherry which herb is being cultivated in jammu as a part of aroma mission so correct answer is lavender this is going to be cultivated in jammu as a part of this aroma mission and this mission was launched in 2016 lavender is an aromatic herb now recently jammu and kashmir administration was also in news because of anmol app apart from that recently the administration of jammu and kashmir was also in news for sparrow initiative this anmol app has been launched as a part of national health mission india's largest ground based optical telescope has been installed in which state so it has been installed in the state of uttarakhand to be specific it is in devasthal in uttarakhand and it is india's largest ground based optical telescope and for this telescope india and belgium has collaborated and this project was assisted by russian academy of sciences who is going to operate this telescope so it will be operated by aryabhatta research institute of observational sciences what is apt41 so apt stands for advanced persistent threat this apt41 is a cyber threat group and it is known to carry out the chinese sponsored cyber attacks it is also known as double dragon so these terms are important for exam first is this apt41 second is this double dragon recently a chinese sponsored threat group was also in news and it is red eco this was in news because and it was targeting india's power sector through a malware and the name of that malware is shadow pad epigraph algorithm was developed in which country so first thing first what is this epigraph algorithm so it is a novel computer algorithm that could predict the vaccine candidate for various disease which indian state for the first time presented the outcome based budget so this is a state of jharkhand and for the first time it presented outcome based budget so as per this the departments of the government of jharkhand have submitted a detailed document on the work that they are going to do in next one year see there are three common terms associated with this first is this outcome second is outlay third is output now please note that this outcome based budget technique was recommended from the budget of 2007-8 and as per this every ministry presents a outcome budget to the ministry of finance first thing first what is outlay outlay is allocation that is amount allocated suppose for a school project government allocated the amount of 2 crore rupees what is output so based on this amount a school has been built so the school building is ready on the basis of the allocation which was announced by the government this is output but the outcome focus on both quantitative and qualitative aspect for example in this case of school output would be the school building suppose this 2 crore rupee was allocated for four government schools so the building for four schools is ready but what kind of education is being provided in these schools whether these schools are functional or not this will be covered in outcome budgeting so output budgeting focus on the quantitative aspect and outcome budgeting focus on the qualitative as well as on the quantitative the starship mission was developed by which country so this country is usa actually this is a mission by spacex spacex is a company by elon musk and it is a company from usa and this starship system of spacex is a fully reusable two stage launch vehicle reusable means right now we use a rocket or launch vehicle to launch any satellite after launching that satellite the same vehicle can be reused to launch another satellites which indian company joined the world economic forum initiative of racial justice in business so this company is wipro this partnering for racial justice in business initiative is an initiative of wef that is world economic forum as the name suggests it is to counter the racism Now recently this world economic forum was also in news because of one more initiative and it is edison alliance so the objective of edison alliance is to provide 
global and equitable access to the digital economy which organization has released the report named world report on hearing so this has been released by who that is world health organization this was released on the occasion of world hearing day this day was on 3rd of march report was released by who that is world health organization it is a specialized agency of united nations and this was established through a constitution which was adopted on 7th of april in 1948 and that is why this day is celebrated as world health day its state is to conduct its first survey of the social and educational conditions of the people from backward classes so this has been done by odisha the chief minister is navin patnaik and the state is going to begin its first state survey of the social and educational conditions of people from backward classes now recently odisha was also in news because of karlapat wildlife sanctuary this wildlife sanctuary is in odisha recently it was in news because of death of certain elephants recently for the better conservation of elephants ministry of environment launched a new portal and it is suraksha portal the simlipal biosphere reserve is located in which indian state so this is a biosphere reserve in the state of odisha actually it is located on the eastern end of eastern ghats why it was in news recently because of a wildfire in the national park now the name of simlipal is derived from a word simul which means silk cotton tree bao dhan is a variety of rice cultivated in which indian state so dhan stands for rice and it is a variety of rice which is rich in iron and it is red rice it is cultivated in the alluvial soil in the brahmaputra valley of assam so the correct answer is assam now recently it was in news because the first consignment of this red rice was shipped to usa the unique thing about this rice is that it is grown without the use of any chemical fertilizer according to recently published municipal performance index which city ranked first in the category of million plus cities first thing first this was released by m o h u a that is ministry of housing and urban affairs name of index is municipal performance index as per this index in the category of million plus cities indore is on top position indore is in madhya pradesh what is the meaning of this term million plus it means population of more than 1 million and indore is followed by surat and bhopal surat is in gujarat bhopal is in madhya pradesh in the less than 1 million category ndmc that is new delhi municipal council is on top position which company launched a whatsapp api enabled chatbot named mitra to provide employment opportunities so this has been done by a company named vahan it has launched a whatsapp api what is api it is application programming interface now in pharmaceutical sector there is one more api answer in comment box what is the full form of that api which is related to pharmaceutical sector so the name of this chatbot is mitra this will help in providing employment opportunities to the people karmadek islands are located in which country so these islands are part of new zealand this is new zealand this is the geographical location of karmadek islands this is south pacific ocean this is coral sea papua new guinea recently the first prime minister of papua new guinea passed away he was popularly known as father of papua new guinea answer in comment box what was his name so why this karmadek islands was in news it was in news because of earthquake recently new zealand was also in news because of maori tribe nft that is non fungible token is related to which field so it is related to crypto art now first thing first let me explain you the concept of fungible versus non fungible if something is fungible that means all the units of that particular item are same or equal for example grains of rice or chocolate all the pieces of chocolate or all the packets of chocolate are same they are similar on the other hand non fungible items are those items which are unique that means suppose this is non fungible token number 1 this is non fungible token number 2 so they can never be same every token is unique for example your mobile number every user will have a unique mobile number no two users can have same mobile number again this is over simplification just to make you understand which organization recently named india as the biggest over performer with regards to the frontier technologies so this is anctad recently anctad released a report and it is technology and innovation report this report was released by anctad 
what is UNCTAD? It is United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. So it is United Nations Agency. As per this report, India is over performer in terms of frontier technologies. Now, frontier technologies are those technology which can be used to address a large scale problem. For example, 5G technology, 3D printing or drones, gene editing. All these are example of frontier technologies. Means these technology can transform the life of human beings. Which organization released Food Waste Index 2021? So this was released by UNEP, that is United Nations Environment Program. UNEP was established as a result of UNCHE, that is United Nations Conference on Human Environment. This is very significant conference and this conference held in Stockholm and this conference held in 1972. The headquarters of UNEP is in Nairobi. Nairobi is in Kenya. Which state has introduced night safaris in its national parks. So this was done by Madhya Pradesh. What is the meaning of this term night safari? It means nocturnal visit to a zoo or a wildlife natural area. Nocturnal means in night. So if we are going to visit zoo or national park in night, then it is going to be night safari. So Madhya Pradesh has recently introduced this concept in three national parks so that people can witness the nighttime animals in their natural habitat. And which are these three national parks? So these three are in Madhya Pradesh and these are Bandhavgarh, second one is Kanha and third one is Pinch. Where is the headquarters of UNECE that is United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. So the headquarters is in Geneva. It was set up in 1947 and it was set up by United Nations Economic and Social Council. Headquarters is in Geneva. Recently it was in use because of a report and the report was Technology Brief Carbon Capture Use and Stories. OPE LIP, a Tribal Livelihood Development Program is funded by which organization? So this program is funded by IFAD. What is IFAD? It is International Fund for Agricultural Development. So as the name suggests, it is a fund for the development of agriculture. Now, Odisha government collaborated with this IFAD to focus on the particularly vulnerable tribal group. Now, in our country, there are 75 PVTZ. That is particularly vulnerable tribal group. Total, there are 75. Answer in comment box, which state has the highest number of PVTZ? Now, the objective of this collaboration is to improve the living condition and to reduce the poverty among these tribal communities. Where is the headquarters of CARICOM? So, first thing first, what is this CARICOM? CARICOM stands for Caribbean Community. So, the headquarters is in Guyana and it was founded in 1973. It is also known as Caribbean Community and Common Market. Recently, this area was in use because of Vaccine Matri Initiative. Which commission is going to introduce a digital green pass? See, these terms are in use frequently. Digital green pass or green pass or vaccine pass. In simplest term, it means it will show your vaccine status in the context of coronavirus. So this is going to be done by European Commission. That means they are going to introduce this digital green pass and this pass will have the information about your vaccination and about the test results or about your recovery. So why so? Because of coronavirus, there was a lockdown. The space hurricane which was discovered recently was spotted in which region of Earth? So it was spotted in the North Pole area and scientists have discovered the space hurricane for the first time and it was detected over North Pole. Please note that it was detected in upper atmosphere of Earth. So a group of scientists from different countries observed this space hurricane using DMSP satellites. What is DMSP? It is Defense Meteorological Satellite Program. Now what is the meaning of this term space hurricane? It means the rain of electrons in ionosphere instead of water. So it, it will create a phenomena like this one. This is for your visual illustration. Which banking company has successfully tested the world's first blockchain transaction in space? So this was done by JP Morgan. JP Morgan has successfully tested the world's first blockchain transaction in space with the help of satellites named with the help of satellites of a company named GOMSPACE. It is a company of Denmark. So what has happened recently this JP Morgan was in news because it tested the world's first blockchain transaction in space and this has been done with the help of a space company named 
Gom Space. It is a space company of Denmark. As per a recent report, which is the most affected country by Stokerware applications. So this is a country. So this is Russia. And this was a report by Kaspersky. It released a report and the name was State of Stokerware 2020. So it is made up of two terms. Stoker plus software. So it is a software or a malicious application that is installed to secretly monitor the phone activities. In simplest term, it is going to stalk you. So as per this report, Russia was the most impacted country and Russia is followed by Brazil and USA. India is on fourth position. Which organization released World Food Price Index? So this was released by FAO. What is FAO? It is Food and Agriculture Organization. So this released this food price index and it measures the change in the price of basket of products related to food. Now, the headquarters of FAO is in Rome. It is in Italy. The headquarters of IFAD is also in Rome in Italy. Recently, FAO was in use as it completed 75 years. And therefore, India released a commemorative coin to celebrate this event. Which is the only country to register a three-digit growth in the wearable market as per the recent report of IDC. Now, first thing first, what is this wearable market? It means the products which are wearable. For example, smartwatch or headphone, earphone, all these are wearable products. So as per a report by IDC, what is IDC? It is International Data Corporation. India is the only country to register three digit growth in the wearable market. And in 2020, India achieved a growth of 144%. Indian naval ships INS Kulish and INS Sumedha visited the port of which country for the first time? So this is Mangola port and it is in Bangladesh. So why Indian naval ships are visiting this port city? Because this year Bangladesh is completing 50 years of independence and these are visiting Bangladesh to commemorate the Swarnim Vijay Wars. Actually in 1971 there was Indo-Pakistan war and as a result of victory in that war, Bangladesh became a separate country. And to commemorate our victory over Pakistan, 16th of December is celebrated as Vijay Divas. Which tennis star won gold in BWF Swiss Open Super 300? So Carolina Marie won the gold medal in BWF Swiss Open Super 300 tournament. It is a tennis tournament and she defeated Indian badminton player PV Sindhu. Now Carolina Marine is from Spain. Recently Spain was in use as it was the host of COP25. COP stands for Conference of Parties. COP26 is going to be in UK in Glasgow. In fact UK is the host of G7 summit as well. And during this COP26 ISA that is International Solar Alliance is going to launch World Solar Bank. Under which scheme bank loans between 10 lakh and 1 crore is provided to set up enterprise to the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe or women borrower. So, as a part of Stand Up India scheme, bank loan facilities are provided to the vulnerable section of society. This Stand Up India scheme was launched in 2016. As a part of this, loan is provided to the vulnerable section and the loan amount is between 10 lakh to 1 crore. So, per branch of bank intends to provide loan to at least one SC or ST borrower and one women borrower. Which Indian wrestler has regained top position in the world ranking recently? So recently Indian wrestler Bajrang Punya regained the top position in the world ranking. Recently he won a gold medal at Matteo Pelicon ranking series and with this he earned his quota for the Tokyo Olympics. How many scholars have been selected for India Science and Research Fellowship 2021. So 40 scholars were selected as a part of this initiative and these 40 scholars belong to six countries. What is the objective? Objective is to provide them support for their research and fellowship. And this is a part of initiative of DST that is Department of Science and Technology. DST is under Ministry of Science and Technology. The 7500 Janos Dekender has been inaugurated recently in which state? So it was inaugurated in Meghalaya. To be specific, it is in Shillong. And these Jan Osdhi Kendra are opened as a part of Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Osdhi Priyojana. What is the objective of the scheme? Objective is to provide 
quality medicine at affordable cost. It is a scheme by central government. Overall business confidence index was released by which organization? So this was released by FICCI. What is FICCI? It is Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So it was formed in 1927. The founders were Ghanshyam Das Birla and Purushottam Das Thakur Das. It is a non-governmental organization. Headquarters is in New Delhi and presently Uday Shankar is the president of FICCI. Next question is which country was the host of UN Congress on Crime Prevention? So this event was hosted by Japan and it was commenced in Kyoto. Now in the context of Kyoto, there is a Kyoto protocol. It is related to environment. So Kyoto is in Japan and it was the host of this United Nations Congress on Crime Prevention. Japan was the host of this event for the first time since 1970. India's first transgender community desk has been inaugurated in the police station of Wit State. So it was inaugurated at the Gachiboli police station of Telangana and it is India's first transgender community desk. Objective is to provide support to the transgender community so that they feel safe. So this desk will serve as a common point for grievance redressal among transgender community. Which body recommends the selection of heads of public sector banks and financial institutions? So this is triple B that is Bank Board Bureau. So it recommends the selection of heads of PSP and financial institutions. It started operations from 1st of April in 2016. Recently it was in news because of the new appointments of certain heads of public sector banks. So please notice that so please notice this term recommends. This Bank Board Bureau does not appoint it recommends. So there is a slight difference which is the final authority to appoint write down that in comment box. Next question is where is the Indian Institute of Sugarcane Research located? So this institute is in Lucknow. Lucknow is in Uttar Pradesh. Why this was in news? Because recently Ministry of Civil Aviation and DGCA that is Directorate General of Civil Aviation granted exemptions to this institute to use drones. Now with the help of these drones this institute is going to conduct a trial to evaluate the impact of drone spraying for controlling pest and disease of sugarcane crop using drones. Next question is which organization is to commission India's largest floating solar power plant at Telangana. So this is NTPC. What is NTPC? It is National Thermal Power Corporation. So it is going to commission India's largest floating solar power plant and it will be at Ramagundam in Telangana. This is going to be a 100 megawatt project and it will be a single location largest floating solar plant in our country as of now. Next question is Warren Buffet is the CEO of which company? So he is the CEO of Riksha Hathaway. He is an American investor. Recently he was in news because as per Bloomberg Billionaires Index, he crossed the milestone of 100 billion US dollars and that's why he joined this elite club of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk and Bill Gates. So first thing first, he is investor. He is from USA. Name of his company is Briksha Hathaway. Next question is who has been re-elected as the president of International Olympic Committee? So first thing first, the name is Thomas Bash. He has been re-elected. His country is Germany. So he has been re-elected as the president of International Olympic Committee and he has been elected for a term of four years. Now this year, Olympic Games will be organized in Tokyo. Next question is what percentage of customs duty would be levied on import of solar modules in India? So the correct answer is 40 percentage. Now when you are covering this question, first thing that should pop up in your mind is that why custom duty is imposed? Okay, one homework for you whether custom duty is subsumed under GST or not. So now government has decided to impose a custom duty for import. Import means when we are getting it from other countries. So for import of solar mod modules, the custom duty is going to be 40% and for import of solar cells, the custom duty is going to be 25%. Next question is which ministry has launched the convergence of ESI scheme with Pradhan Mantri Jan Arugya Yojana. So this is very important initiative for EPFO examination. So recently Labour Ministry announced the convergence of ESI scheme with Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana in 113 districts of four states. Which are these four states? One is Chhattisgarh, 
one is Karnataka, third is Madhya Pradesh and fourth is Maharashtra. Now what is ESI? It is Employees State Insurance. Next question is the Rasin Dam and Chillimal Dam are constructed in which Indian state? So they are constructed in state of Uttar Pradesh. So these dams are expected to bring relief to the people of Uttar Pradesh who are facing the water problems. Now recently this state of Uttar Pradesh was also in news because of Arjun Sahayak irrigation project. Uttar Pradesh was also in news because of Varasat initiative which Indian body released the report India Fintech A 100 billion US dollars opportunity. So this has been released by FIKI. What is FIKI? It is Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So FIKI in association with Boston Consulting Group released this report India Fintech a 100 billion opportunity. So FIKI was established in 1927. Mr. Ganshan Das Birla and Mr. Purushottam Das Thakur Das were the founders of FIKI. It is a non-governmental organization. Currently the president of FIKI is Mr. Uday Shankar. Now there is a term Fintech. Fintech is a combination of two terms finance plus technology. So you are using technology for the financial solutions. This is Fintech. Next question is which union ministry is set to unveil the draft e-commerce policy. So this will be done by DPIIT. What is DPIIT? It is Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade and DPIIT is under Commerce Ministry. This is going to launch draft e-commerce policy. Now recently this Commerce Ministry was also in news because of Prarambh initiative. So this Prarambh summit was organized in the context of Startup Summit. Recently Startup India scheme completed 5 years and on that occasion this Prarambh summit was organized. Next question is what is the frequency of Labour Ministry's establishment based job survey for organized sector. Now this is very important for EPFO examination. So recently the Ministry of Labour was in news as it announced it is going to conduct different surveys. So one survey is going to be about establishment based job opportunities. Another survey will be on migrants, on domestic workers, on transport sector and on professionals. So total five surveys. This establishment based survey is going to be quarterly. So the survey will capture the first quarter of fiscal year of 2021-22. Next question is India's first centralized A conditioned railway terminal is to be come up in which city. So this is going to be in Karnataka in Bangalore and this has been named after veteran civil engineer Bharat Ratan Sir M. Vishweshwaraya. In fact his birth anniversary is on 15th of September and this is celebrated as engineers day in our country. Next question is Mint that is mobile integrated network terminal which was in news is associated with which organization. So it is associated to Indian Army. Indian Army is in the process of procuring mint systems under category of defense acquisition processor 2020 now what are these mint system as you can see as you can see from full form it is a system for communication and it will provide access and support to voice video and data so these systems will be procured by indian army from domestic company now in the context of defense acquisition we have defense acquisition council this is the highest decision making body in the context of acquisition by defense forces this council is headed by defense minister next question is the julu's tribe is associated to which country so julu are the tribe of south africa recently this tribe was in news because its king goodwill zwelithini passed away that's why this tribe was in news now in the context of tribes or for the welfare of tribes we have national commission for scheduled tribes this is a constitutional body and article 338a of indian constitution contains the provision for national commission for scheduled tribes next question is which state is set to start plantation of sea buckthorn serbs so himachal pradesh is going to start the plantation of sea buckthorn in the cold desert area what is sea buckthorn it is a serb and which produce orange yellow colored edible berries and these are useful for different medical purpose next question is carbon border agreements has been proposed by which global association so this has been done by european union now what is this entire issue see suppose in european union there are five countries a b c d e now out of these five countries suppose b and c are not serious about environmental issues and they are major polluter so as per this new carbon border agreement there is a provision of 
कार्बन बॉर्डर टैक्स और कार्बन बॉर्डर एडजस्टमेंट इट इज अ टैक्स ऑन द इम्पोर्टेड गुड्स विद अमाउंट ऑफ टैक्स विल बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन द कार्बन एमिशन एसोसिएटेड विद द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ दीज गुड्स नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हु एज अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट कमीशन फॉर एयर क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट इन द नेशनल कैपिटल रीजन दैट इज एनसीआर सो वाई दिस कमीशन वॉज इन यूज लेट मी गिव इट्स ब्रीफ बैकग्राउंड दिस कमीशन वॉज सेटअप थ्रू एन ऑर्डिनेंस नाउ प्लीज नोट दैट द ऑर्डिनेंस पावर्स ऑफ प्रेजिडेंट आर मैंशन इन आर्टिकल वन ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑर्डिनेंस पावर्स ऑफ गवर्नर आर मैंशन इन द आर्टिकल टू वन थ्री ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वनवासी समागम ए ट्राइबल कॉन्ग्रीगेशन वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन विद स्टेट और यूनियन टेरिटरी सो रिसेंटली दिस वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन सोनभद्र डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश एंड प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया वॉज द चीफ गेस्ट फॉर दिस इवेंट नाउ वन वासी स्टैंड फॉर ट्राइबल और ट्राइब फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी वी हैव नेशनल कमीशन फॉर शेड्यूल्ड ट्राइब्स एंड एडवाइजरी कमेटी हैज बीन सेटअप टू स्टडी विच इंडियन रिवर फॉर द नेक्स्ट टू ईयर्स एंड दिस कमेटी इज टू बी चेयर बाई कल्चर मिनिस्टर सो फॉर विच रिवर दिस कमेटी हैज बीन कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड सो दिस कमेटी हैज बीन कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड फॉर सरस्वती रिवर सो दिस कमेटी इज गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट दिस रिवर नाउ बिफोर दिस कमेटी पैनल वॉज ऑल्सो सेटअप इन ट्वेंटी सेवेंटीन एंड इट वॉज सेटअप बाई ए एस आई वॉट इज ए एस आई इट इज आर्कोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया सो ए एस आई इज अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर प्रेजेंट डी जी दैट इज डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ ए एस आई इज वी विद्यावती हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ ए एस आई इज इन न्यू दिल्ली ओ टी पी आर एम एस सर्टिफिकेट्स आर एसोसिएटेड विद विच यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री सो दीज आर एसोसिएटेड विद मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन Previously, it used to be known as MHRD, that is Ministry of Human Resource Development. Now it has been renamed as Ministry of Education. Present Minister is Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. So, what is this OT PRMS? It is Online Teacher Pupil Registration Management System. So, this is a management system. Now, those individuals who have completed any course under this National Council for Teacher Education, they can register themselves on this specific platform. so that they can be recruited as teachers which institution announced a rule that sought to treat banks additional tier 1 bonds as having 100 years of maturity so this was in news because of a circular by sebi what is sebi it is securities and exchange board of india now first thing first what is a bond suppose you are a1 you need money you are going to sign a bond and say b1 purchase it b1 gave you money and you have filled a form that you are going to give this money back on this and this date along with this much interest so this is simplified explanation of bond all india tourist vehicles authorization and permit rules will be applicable from which date so these rules will be applicable from the new fiscal year that is from the 1st of april recently these were approved by ministry of road transport and highways so as the name suggests it is all india tourist vehicle authorization and permit rules so as per these new rules any tourist vehicle operator may apply for all india tourist permit and this can be done online and it will be issued within the 30 days of submission which country has become india's second biggest oil supplier so usa became the india's second biggest oil supplier who is india's biggest oil supplier it is iraq usa has overtaken saudi arabia is the second biggest or second largest oil supplier to india now please note that iran used to be a major supplier of oil for india but because of sanctions on iran the oil import reduced drastically sanctions because of jcpoa what is jcpoa it is joint comprehensive plan of action so informally it is known as iran nuclear deal strange hills forest reserve is located in which state of india so it is located in the state of gujarat and it is home to largest number of asiatic lions recently it was in news because of massive fire apart from this recently nagarhol tiger reserve and simlepal was also in news because of this fire incident now coming to the geographical location of this strunja hills so as you can see this is the geographical location so these hills are located in the bhavnagar district of gujarat and these hills are located on the banks of river shetrunji and this is considered that means this hill range is considered as sacred by jain community so this is arabian sea this is bay of bengal the chenab bridge of indian railways is being constructed in which state or union territory so this is being constructed in the 
Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. It is a steel and concrete arch bridge and it is being constructed by Indian Railways. So this is constructed between Bakkal and Kauri of Jammu and Kashmir. And on completion, this is going to be the world's highest bridge. Where is India's first dedicated express cargo terminal? So it is in Bangalore. Bangalore is in Karnataka. So what is the meaning of this term? Dedicated express cargo terminal. It means this terminal will be used exclusively for the export and import of international couriers. Dedicated means it will be used for this purpose only. So it is India's first dedicated express cargo terminal. It was recently launched in Bangalore. It is on Bangalore Airport. And the name of Bangalore Airport is Kampegoda International Airport. And it is in the city of Bangalore. And it has been constructed by the BIAL. What is BIAL? It is Bangalore International Airport Limited. Where is the headquarters of IPU? That is Interparliamentary Union. So first thing first, the headquarters of IPU is in Geneva in Switzerland. And it was founded in 1889. Objective is to promote peace through parliamentary diplomacy and dialogue. Recently, why it was in news? It was in news because of its president. Who is president of IPU? He is Mr. Duarte Pocheco. So he is from Portugal. So recently, he was on visit of India. And that is why this IPU was in news. So the headquarters is in Geneva in Switzerland. The first National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research was established in which state? So it was established in Punjab and it was in Mohali. This was established through National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Act of 1998. So this act was enacted to declare this institute as an institute of national importance. So why this entire issue was in use? Because recently a bill was introduced in Lok Sabha to provide the national importance status to six institutions related to pharmaceutical sector. The Mines and Mineral Amendment Bill of 2021 seeks to empower central government to issue directions to DMF. The question is, what is DMF? So DMF stands for District Mineral Foundation. So recently a bill was introduced in Lok Sabha. Bill is Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Bill of 2021. It seeks to amend this Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act of 1957. Ampilard's fund has been suspended till which year due to COVID-19 pandemic. So this fund has been suspended till 2022. What is Ampilard's? It is Member of Parliament Local Area Development Scheme. So no new Ampilard's fund will be allocated for this year and for the next year because of COVID-19 pandemic. What is the initial paid up capital of DFI that is Development Financial Institution to be set up by Union Government? So the amount is 20,000 crore. Recently, the cabinet has cleared a bill to set up DFI. So as the name suggests, it is Development Financial Institution. That means it is going to provide the finance facility for the developmental projects in our country. Which organization released the Asia and the Pacific SDG Progress Report? What is SDG? It is Sustainable Development Goals. So this report has been released by ESCAP. What is ESCAP? It is Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. And it is associated with United Nations. So recently it released a report, Asia and Pacific SDG Progress Report. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. Which ministry has moved the National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill 2021 in the Lok Sabha. So this has been done by MHA, that is Ministry of Home Affairs. So this bill seeks to redefine the meaning of Government of Delhi as LG of Delhi. This bill seeks to give discretionary powers to the LG of Delhi in aspects in which the Legislative Assembly of Delhi is empowered to make laws. See, there are two key players in Delhi. One is LG, that is Lieutenant Governor. One is Chief Minister and Council of Ministers. Council of Ministers is headed by Chief Minister. Now, this bill seeks to provide powers, more powers to LG in certain areas and that is why it has become a matter of political tussle. The NGT has set up a 12-member committee on prevention of unscientific mining in which state of India. So, first thing first, there is a concept of rat mining or rat hole mining. As you can see in the picture, they, these are small, small holes and in these holes, people enter to extract coal. Now, this is totally unsafe way of coal extraction. Usually, these holes are very small. That is why 
children are employed to extract coal because they are small so they can easily enter into these pits now this is very unscientific way of mining and this is very unsafe that is why there is a problem in fact the problem is so serious that meghalaya government had banned this type of mining which state has stopped in employment generation under mg narega during 2020 21 so rajasthan was on top position in terms of employment generated as a part of mg narega what is mg narega it is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme so as a part of the scheme the employment opportunities are provided for unskilled work please note it is for unskilled work that means it is for manual labor so recently the entire issue was in news because as per the latest report india has generated 366 crore person days of work under mg narega what is the upper limit to permit abortion to the special categories of women as per the medical termination of pregnancy bill 2020 so recently this abortion issue was in news because of this mtp act what is mtp it is medical termination of pregnancy amendment bill 2020 why it was in news recently because rajya sabha has passed it so the previous limit was 20 weeks that means limit for abortion now it has been increased to 24 weeks that means up to 24 weeks abortion can be allowed in certain circumstances so this is applicable for special categories of women including rape survivors victims of incest minors and differentially abled the 10th schedule which is known as the anti defection law was added in the constitution in which year so it was added in 1985 it was added through 52nd constitutional amendment act it is also known as anti defection law what is anti defection suppose you are from party a you contested from party a and now you won the election after victory you cannot switch to party b if you are going to do so this is called as defection where is the handicrafts and handlooms export corporation of india so it is situated in uttar pradesh that means the headquarters is in uttar pradesh and it is in noida why it was in news because recently cabinet approved the closure of handicrafts that means now it will be closed so the closure of handicrafts and handlooms export corporation of india has been approved headquarters is in noida in uttar pradesh so hhec is a government owned entity and it is under ministry of textiles which institution publishes the state of world's indigenous people report so this is published by undesa what is undesa it is united nations department of economic and social affairs so recently it published the state of world's indigenous people report so as per this report the world's indigenous people live in areas around 80% of the planet's biodiversity however still they face the problem of legal rights of natural resources now recently this undesa was also in news because of few other reports first was world economic situation and prospectus second one was international migration report where is the headquarters of cdri cdri stands for coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure so the headquarters of cdri is in new delhi it is a coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure it aims to provide disaster resilient infrastructure now what is the meaning of this term disaster resilient infrastructure that means infrastructure which can remain safe during disasters so recently this was in news because cdri in partnership with member countries hosted international conference on disaster resilient infrastructure under which project csir that is council of scientific and industrial research is set to map genetic diversity in indian ocean So as a part of this project Trace Biome CSIR NIO is going to map the genetic diversity of organisms in Indian Ocean. First thing first this project is for Indian Ocean and this project is for mapping of genetic diversity in Indian Ocean and this project will be executed by CSIR NIO. Where was the IBSA Women's Forum meeting held? First thing first what is IBSA? it is india brazil south africa if we add china and russia into it then these are the members of brics brics is association of five countries india is the chairperson of brics for 2021 okay now coming back to ibsa so ibsa women's forum meeting was held recently in virtual mode 
What is virtual mode? It means video conferencing. Which bank in India has linked a deal for borrowing linked to SOFR? What is SOFR? It is secured overnight financing rate. Now, before the answer, let me explain you a few terms. What is ECB? It is external commercial borrowing. External means you are taking money from other countries. Other country in the sense, suppose you are Indian company, so you are taking money from say any entity from Japan or any entity from USA and it is a borrowing for commercial purpose. So that's why it is external commercial borrowing. Pritzker price is associated with which field? So it is related to architecture. Recently, the award for 2021 was announced and it has been granted to Anne Lacton and Jean-Philippe Vessel. These are from France and these are the founders of Lacton and Vessel. This Pritzker Prize is given by Pritzker family and it is sponsored by Hayat Foundation. It is one of the most premier architecture prize and usually it is considered as a Nobel in architecture. Again, it is informally known as Nobel in architecture, not in a formal way. Now, one important point is that Annie Lacton became the French Annie Lacton became the first French female architect to win this Pritzker Prize. What is the name of telemedicine service offered by the Union Health Ministry? So the name of this service is E Sanjeevani. Now first thing first, what is telemedicine? So it is a combination of two terms, tele plus medicine. It refers to the practice of providing treatment to the patients who are remotely located. What does that mean? It means the patient and doctor are not physically present with each other. So you can say the patient is in, for example, Bihar. The doctor is in Uttar Pradesh and they are communicating with the help of technology. And this is how the doctor is providing treatment to the patient. The newly formed Indian Oil Corporation Finergy JV is to replace lithium with which metal to make batteries for electric vehicles. So first thing first, JV is a joint venture. It is a joint venture of two companies. One is Indian Oil Corporation and second is Finergy. So this joint venture is going to make batteries for electric vehicles. Now in the batteries, instead of lithium, they are going to use aluminum. So they are going to replace lithium with aluminum to make these batteries and these batteries will be used for electric vehicles. And the first customers are going to be Maruti Suzuki and Asok Leyland. This Finergy is a company of Israel and it is a battery developer. Which country has rolled out larger denomination banknotes due to hyperinflation. So this country is Venezuela. Now first thing first, inflation is increase in price. So here you need to know about different terms related to inflation. What is inflation? What is deflation? What is disinflation? What is stagflation? What is skewed inflation? Skewed inflation means inflation for limited products. Which country's parliament had voted in favor of amending the country's constitution to include climate and biodiversity protection. So this country is European country and it is France. Recently, lower house of French parliament voted in favor of amending the constitution to include climate and biodiversity protection. The current president of France is Emmanuel Macron. The Sinatra doctrine which was in use has been adopted by which international association? So it has been adopted by European Union and Various Central and Eastern European countries adopted this doctrine. So, this doctrine has two major objectives. First is to increase cooperation with China and second is to strengthen the sovereignty of European Union by protecting its technological sectors of its economy. Scientists of which organization have developed indigenous high electron mobility transistor that is HEMTs. So, this has been done by the scientists of IISC Bangalore and they have developed India's first HEMT that is high electron mobility transistor and these were made from gallium nitride. Now these devices are used extensively in electric cars, locomotives and in power transmission areas. What is the name for the process of capturing carbon dioxide and converting it into solar fuel? So it is known as artificial photosynthesis. See first thing first. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a process by which green plants transform light energy into chemical energy. Similarly, this process is done artificially and that is why it has been given the name artificial photosynthesis.
as per which policy more than 20 year old personal vehicles would be deregistered from 1st of June 2024. So recently a new vehicle scrappage policy was announced by Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari. Now as per this policy the personal vehicles which are more than 20 years old and which failed in the automated physical fitness test such vehicles would be deregistered from 1st of June 2024. What is Baikal GVD which was in use recently. So it is the name of telescope and it has been deployed in the depth of Lake Baikal. It is the deepest lake known in earth and with the help of this telescope scientists are going to research about neutrinos. India recently launched an artificial intelligence research and development initiative with which country? So this country is USA and recently India US Science and Technology Forum launched this initiative in the context of artificial intelligence. The name is US IAI that is US India Artificial Intelligence Initiative and from Indian side DST is going to coordinate. What is DST? It is Department of Science and Technology. DST is under Science and Technology Ministry. Under this ministry we have two departments. One is DST, another is DBT that is Department of Biotechnology. Now please note that this IUSSTF is a bilateral organization. Bilateral means India and USA established this organization to promote science and technology. Which country has recently passed a legislation to legalize euthanasia? So Spain is this country. Recently Spain passed this law and it legalized euthanasia. Now with this Spain became the fourth European country to decriminalize assisted suicide. The rest three countries are Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Which institution developed the Energy Sauraj Yatra bus? So this has been done by the professor of IIT Bombay. Name of professor is Dr. Chetan Singh Solanki. Recently this Energy Sauraj Yatra bus was unveiled by Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank. So what is so special about this Energy Sauraj Yatra bus? This bus runs on solar energy. That is why it was in news. Now apart from this bus recently few other events related to solar energy were, were in news. First is recently the researchers from Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research developed a system to capture the carbon dioxide and to turn it into solar fuel. Which organization release All India Consumer Price Index? Consumer Price Index is CPI. Okay. So it is released by NSO that is National Statistics Office and this NSO is under MOSPI that is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now there are different CPI numbers which are released by different authorities. So one is CPI for industrial workers, another is CPI for agricultural laborers, third is CPI for rural laborers. All these three that is CPI for industrial workers, agricultural laborers and for rural laborers. All these three are released by Labor Bureau and Labor Bureau is under Ministry of Labor. What is the cost of LED bulbs under Gram Uzala program which was launched by Convergence Energy Services Limited that is CESL. So the cost of this one LED bulb is going to be 10 rupee. Recently Power Minister launched this Gram Uzala program to provide LED bulbs at a subsidized rate of 10 rupee per bulb and this scheme has been launched from Bihar. To be specific it has been launched from ARA in Bihar. These bulbs are manufactured by Convergence Energy Services Limited. It is a subsidiary of EESL. What is EESL? It is Energy Efficiency Services Limited. Now the target is to distribute 600 million such LED bulbs. Cost is going to be 10 rupee. This scheme is to be financed through carbon credits. Which country has hosted a peace conference for Afghanistan recently? So this country is Russia. Please note that Afghanistan is facing the problems because of militancy and Taliban is one such militant group in Afghanistan. Other groups are such as Haqqani network and all but that is not that much important from exam perspective. Now Russia recently hosted a peace conference for Afghanistan and this is first of three planned international conference ahead of 1st of May. Why 1st of May is so significant? Because this is the deadline which has been fixed by the US Taliban agreement to withdraw US and NATO troops from Afghanistan. Okay, let me simplify it. This is Afghanistan. With reference to road transport ministry, what is RVSF? So 
it is registered vehicle scrapping policy so what is this entire issue see recently road transport ministry announced a new vehicle scrappage policy that after some time duration the vehicles will be scrapped and the owners of those vehicles will be given an incentive to buy new vehicle specifically environment friendly vehicles now in order to scrap those vehicles there are certain facilities or certain locations in these locations these vehicles will be scrapped now there is a problem problem is that suppose there is a person named Avon he was having a car this car was stolen and it was taken to this RVSF that is registered vehicle scrapping policy a thief claimed that this is his car and now you please scrap it so to avoid such circumstances the RVSF will be connected to different database so that such instances can be avoided which organization has extended its support for the India's H2O Waterwise program. So this organization is UNESCO. This H2O Waterwise program is conducted for school students to make them aware about the importance of water. Now please note that on 22nd of March, World Water Day was celebrated and the theme of this World Water Day was valuing water. So recently, UNESCO has partnered with different organizations for this H2O Waterwise program. Now answer in comment box which sustainable development goals deals with water and sanitation. Now on the occasion of World Water Day, Prime Minister of India launched a campaign Jal Shakti Abhiyan Catch the Rain. So as the name suggests, it is a water conservation program to conserve the rainwater and the implementation authorities Jal Shakti Ministry. On this occasion, Prime Minister urged that the Manrega funds should be spent on the rainwater conservation. So 22nd of March was celebrated as World Water Day. Apart from that, 23rd of March was observed as Martyrs Day in the memory of Sahid Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev. 23rd of March was also observed as World Meteorological Day. On the other hand, 21st of March was observed as World Poetry Day. Which state has passed a bill to recover damages from the protesters? So this has been done by Haryana government. What is this entire scenario? See, during protest, lot of people damage public property. And since it was a mob, it is very difficult to fix the accountability that who did so. So now, the state government of Haryana has passed a legislation to recover the damages of properties caused by the person during agitation, including riot and violent disorder. A similar legislation had passed by the Uttar Pradesh government last month. Now, please answer in comment box whether there is any fundamental duty mentioned in our constitution to protect the public property or not, whether there is any such fundamental duty or not. Which country is to conduct airborne radar survey to estimate the thickness of Himalayan glaciers? This country is India. Airborne radar survey means the survey will be conducted from top. Objective is to estimate the thickness of glaciers of Himalaya. And for this purpose, a pilot project is to be conducted in Lahul Spiti Basin of Himachal Pradesh. Next question is, as per National Accounts Statistics 2021, the private final consumption expenditure of which sector had the steepest rise? So, as per NAS, NAS is National Accounts Statistics 2021, the private final consumption expenditure on health, education and restaurants recorded an increment. So, this NAS is released by MOSPI. That is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Next question is INSA COZ Consortium was in news recently. The question is what does IN stands for in this term? So first thing first, what is IN SACOZ? It is Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomics Consortium. So it has been set up by the government of India for the surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 virus. Next question is Sarat Kamal Satya. Sutirth Mukherjee, who were in news recently for qualifying for the Olympics, are the players of which sport? So these players are associated to table tennis. Recently, the Asian Olympic qualification tournament held in Doha. Doha is in Qatar. And in that, four Indian table tennis players confirmed their seat in the Tokyo Olympics. Next question is, who is set to head the government committee for manufacturing in high technology area. So this empowered committee for manufacturing in high technology area will be headed by Union Commerce Minister and presently he is Mr. Piyush 
Goel. So the objective is to improve investment and to promote manufacturing in the technology intensive sectors. Apart from that, recently government has set up 11 committees to speed up the transition of India from linear economy to circular economy. In circular economy, the objective is maximum utilization of resources. Next question is India has entered into an agreement with which country for accelerating patent prosecution. So this country is Japan. Recently, India has entered into an agreement with Japan for allowing each other's patent offices to act as international searching authority and international preliminary examining authority. Next question is NDHN sandbox environment has been in news. What does H stands for in NDHM? So H stands for health. NDHM stands for National Digital Health Mission. Recently, NDHM Sandbox was in news. So the objective of this NDHM Sandbox is to provide opportunities to those who want to create applications for the healthcare sector. So the Sandbox service of NDHM hosts the building block environment. Next question is Threadit is a standalone website created by which technology company? So it has been created by Google. So this platform allow users to record and send small videos to the team members on work related issues. So this has been developed on the lines of TikTok and on the lines of Reels by Instagram. Objective is you can record small videos and you can send it to your co-workers to speed up the work process. This has been done by Google. Next question is which organization has inaugurated three space incubator centers at NITs? NIT stands for National Institute of Technology. So recently ISRO that is Indian Space Research Organization inaugurated three space incubation technology centers in NIT Nagpur, Bhopal and Raurkela. ISRO has already opened three such centers at NIT Agartala, Trichy and Jalandhar. What is the objective of these centers? Objective is to encourage and to give a platform for space entrepreneurs in India. Which state shares a 510 km border boundary with Myanmar? So this state is Mizoram. Now recently Mizoram was in news because of political refugee issue. Actually some group from Myanmar want political asylum in India. However, Home Ministry recently directed all the state governments that state governments do not have power to grant refugee status to any foreigner. Only central government can do so. That is why the Chief Minister of Mizoram Mr. Joram Thanga asked the central government to grant the political asylum to such refugee from Myanmar. Please note that India is not a signatory to United Nations Refugee Convention of 1951 and its protocol of 1967. Now first thing first, what will be the impact if we are not a signatory? See if we are not a signatory that means we are not bound. So it is not mandatory for us to grant asylum. 2011 Istanbul Convention which was in news recently is associated with which issue. So this is a convention related to domestic violence and gender equality. This is also known as Council of Europe Accord. Actually, this is the formal name and Istanbul Convention is informal name since this convention was signed in Istanbul in 2011. So this is a convention to prevent and to eliminate domestic violence and to promote gender equality. Naibu Naivgam Yerko, the first indigenous knowledge system school has been inaugurated in which state? So it has been inaugurated in Arunachal Pradesh. Chief Minister is Pema Khandu. So this is a school to promote the indigenous and our traditional knowledge system. And this will help in preservation of indigenous traditions, culture and language. Recently this was inaugurated in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. To be specific, as you can see, this was inaugurated in the East Kaming district of Arunachal Pradesh. So this was inaugurated by the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh in presence of Kiran Rizuzu. Kiran Rizuzu is the Sports and Youth Affairs Minister. Which country is to hold the Group Arabian Sea Warfare Exercise near the Gulf of Oman? So this country is going to be USA. US Navy is going to organize this naval exercise along with Belgium, France and Japan. And this will be conducted in Arabian Sea and in the Gulf of Oman. Which country has the strongest military force in the world as per a study by Military Direct? So China has the strongest military force in the world as per this study conducted by military website Military Direct. China 
is followed by USA and Russia is on third position our country is on fourth position and India is followed by France so these are five strongest military forces in the world China USA Russia India and France Pepsu Muzara movement was a farmers movement that happened in which Indian state so this is a movement related to Punjab and this movement started in 1930s at that point of time there was a province and the name was Pepsu what is the full form of Pepsu so this movement started in Punjab in 1930s the province was called Pepsu after independence before being named as Punjab what is the full form of Pepsu it is Patiala and East Punjab States Union so this movement was started by landless farmers in fact the meaning of this term Muzara is landless farmers Nawal Sadavi a feminist psychiatrist and novelist who died recently was associated with which country so she was associated to Egypt and she was a well known feminist novelist and she passed away recently now this is the geographical location of Egypt this is gulf of Suez this is red sea this is gulf of Aqaba and this is Suez canal and this is port said this is mediterranean sea this area is gaza strip and it is israel now recently the swiss canal was also in news because a cargo ship got stuck in the swiss canal so this is a satellite image and this is the swiss canal and this cargo ship struck this way what was the name of cargo ship it is mv evergreen and it is a cargo ship of taiwan so as you can see in this picture this is how it is struck on the side and that is why the traffic in the Swiss canal was halted because of this particular event which day is celebrated by united nations on 21st of march with the theme forest restoration a path to recovery and well being so on 21st of march international day of forest was celebrated the theme was forest restoration a path to recovery and well being 21st of march was also celebrated as world down syndrome day on the other hand 22nd of march was celebrated as world water day 23rd of march was celebrated as world meteorological day it was also observed as martyrs day on the other hand 24th of march was observed as world cancer day on the other hand 24th of march was observed as world tb day that is tuberculosis day answer in comment box whether there is a vaccine for tuberculosis or no which union ministry is set to implement the Kane Betwa project so this is the ministry of jal shakti so this is the first interlinkage project in our country in which river kane is going to be linked with river betwa kane river is in madhya pradesh betwa is in uttar pradesh so the surplus water from one river will be transferred to water deficit river and recently jal shakti ministry sought approval from the public investment board for this project now please note that this river interlinkage project was also in news because of Anna Tiger Reserve as a environment activist this river interlinkage project will disturb this tiger reserve what is the new limit of epf contribution up to which interest would be exempted from tax as per the amendments made in the finance bill of 2021 so the new limit is 5 lakh that means deposit threshold limit up to 5 lakh is exempted from taxation if there is no employer contribution please note that during budget announcement the finance minister had announced that interest earned on epf contribution about 2.5 lakhs will be taxable from 1st of april now this threshold limit has been increased to 5 lakhs now for epf what is epf it is employees provident fund for epf we have epfo employees provident fund organization it is a statutory body statutory means it has been constituted as per the provisions of law and the name of act is employees provident fund and miscellaneous provisions act of 1952 and it is under labor ministry that is ministry of labor and employment with reference to defense what was vajra that was in news recently so it is opv that is offshore petrol vessel and it is a ship of indian coast guard name is vajra it has been built by larsen and tubro recently it was in use because it was commissioned in service so it is the sixth out of seven offshore petrol vessel now please note that icc under mod that is indian coast guard is under the administrative control of ministry of defense so vajra is 
offshore petrol vessel it is related to icz icz is related to mod present defense minister is mr rajnath singh it has been built by lnt that is larsen and cupro the union minister of education has inaugurated the sahid bhagat singh samarak in which state this smart stands for memorial so this was in new delhi so du that is university of delhi organized a program to commemorate 90 years of martyrdom of bhagat singh sukhdev and rajguru 23rd of march is observed as sahid divas or martyrdom day and on this event union education minister ramesh pokhrel nishank virtually inaugurated this sahid bhagat singh samara apart from that it was also announced the existing collection of books on freedom fighters in this smarak has been converted into sahid smriti pustakalaya which indian state has recorded a huge decline in the incidence of tuberculosis at the rate of 7.5 percent so this state is kerala and therefore because of its efforts the state has won the bronze medal in health ministry certification of efforts towards elimination of tb tb is tuberculosis recently Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan also launched Tribal TB Initiative. So the objective is to make India or TB Mukt Bharat. Please note that every year on 24th of March, World Tuberculosis Day is observed, and the theme is Clock is Ticking. Apart from that, recently Dr. Harshvardhan has been appointed as the chairperson of Stop TB Partnership Board. Recently, Kerala was also in news because of Arya Rajendran. She is the youngest mayor in our country, and she became the mayor from Tiruvannathpuram in Kerala. Kerala is the first state in our country to provide MSP for fruits and vegetables. What is the rank of India in the latest International Intellectual Property Index? So, this index is released annually, and it is released by U.S. Chamber of Commerce. GIPC what is GIPC it is global innovation policy center so as per this index india is on 40th position now recently usa was also in news as india and us agreed to reestablish the indo us homeland security dialogue so both countries are going to cooperate with each other in terms of security so the objective is to discuss important security issues such as cyber security and emerging technologies The first such homeland security dialogue between these two countries was organized in 2011 during the administration of Donald Trump this was stopped and now both countries agreed to reestablish this dialogue so that's why it was in news what is manyam konda jatra which was in news recently so it is interstate religious festival and it is celebrated in the states of andhra pradesh odisha so this festival involves shifting of idols from Odisha to Andhra Pradesh. Now, apart from this festival, few other festivals were in news recently. Uttar Pradesh government organized Banana Festival in Kushinagar district. Apart from that, recently Hola Mohalla festival was also in news, and it is celebrated by the Sikh community in Punjab. In addition to that, Navroj festival was also in news. So, this is a Iranian and Persian New Year festival. Now, answer in comment box. Recently, Amrit Mahotsav was in news. What is this Amrit Mahotsav? Which country has recently proposed a UN-sponsored plan to end the civil war in Yemen? So, this country is Saudi Arabia. Actually, there is a civil war going on in Yemen, and now Saudi Arabia has proposed that there should be a ceasefire, and it should be United Nations-sponsored ceasefire. Now, important aspects from exam perspective are first, location of Yemen. capital of yemen then the storm houthi rebels so these are also related to yemen recently saudi arabia was also in news as it is going to host the asian games in 2034 in 2030 qatar is going to host asian games capital of qatar is doha capital of saudi arabia is riyadh Union Cabinet has approved MOU that is Memorandum of Understanding between UPSC that is Union Public Service Commission of India and its counterpart in which country so this country is Afghanistan counterpart means a similar organization or a similar position in that country so MOU was signed for the cooperation between UPSC of India that is Union Public Service Commission of India and IARCSC of Afghanistan what is IARCSC it is Independent Administrative Reforms and 
सिविल सर्विसेज कमीशन सो बोथ दीज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर गोइंग टू शेयर देयर एक्सपीरियंस देयर एक्सपर्टीज इन द मैटर्स ऑफ रिक्रूटमेंट ऑफ सिविल सर्वेंट्स कॉमेमोरेटिव स्टाम्प ऑफ विच इंडियन लीडर्स विजिट टू ओडिशा इन 1921 हैज बीन रिलीज रिसेंटली सो दिस इज अ स्टाम्प रिलेटेड टू गांधी जीज फर्स्ट विजिट टू ओडिशा एंड रिसेंटली दिस वॉज रिलीज बिकॉज इट कम्प्लीटेड हंड्रेड इयर्स सो इन गांधी जी विजिटेड ओडिशा फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एज ए पार्ट ऑफ हिज नॉन को ऑपरेशन मूवमेंट नाउ टू कोमेमोरेट दैट इवेंट बिकॉज इट कम्प्लीटेड हंड्रेड इयर्स रिसेंटली स्पेशल स्टाम्प वॉज रिलीज बाय द गवर्नमेंट सो गांधी जी विजिटेड ओडिशा फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम for his non cooperation movement and he addressed the public in katak thank you and that's all for the day